Is MSG actually bad for you? M- Madison Square Garden? No, monosodium glutamate. You tell me the Knicks play at monosodium glutamate now? This, this is, is a, a hot, hot dog, dog is, is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. I'm your lovable idiot host, Josh Scherer. And I'm your lovable idiot host, Nicole Anaity. <laughs> That's right. We're internet chefs over at Good Mythical Morning and Mythical Kitchen. That's when right. we're not cooking up, what do we do? Mountain Dew Twinkies and stuff like that. Yeah, Mountain uh, Dew Moon Pies is We a big did one. that Moon Tent Dune Pie yeah. as well. Point is, we're over here taking on the world's biggest food debates. That's right, Josh. And we're going to talk about something that is shrouded in mystery Whoa. and racism. <laughs> it's not even <laughs> like, it's more just shrouded in racism, but yeah. there is a lot of mystery. And the reason yeah. we want to talk about this, we're talking about MSG, a.k.a. monosodium glutamate, a.k.a. magical flavor dust, mm-hmm. is that we've talked about it a lot very colloquially on the podcast yeah, where sure. somebody will bring it up in an opinion and we'll just casually be like, hey, by the way, MSG is not actually bad for you. It's yeah. a, a weird racist myth that took off back in the 60s. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we've never actually devoted a whole podcast to talking about it. And we still get comments totally. all the time. We use MSG in a recipe. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody over on the old TikTok, which that comment section, wow, what a nightmare morass of society's worst. Almost bad as YouTube. Oh, my God. I'd say worse. <laughs> it's 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 a little bit more unhinged over on the TikTok. Oh, you know, yeah. you got a bunch of young people. Brains are all scrambled from all the content. Okay. Um, anywho, so we still get a lot of questions. And so we wanted to take that on today. That's that's right. Well, I don't. The question is: Is MSG bad for you? A uh, long story short, no, it's not bad for you. Okay, so I, I made a space, but in, never in mind. the way that, like, is salt bad for you? Correct. Is pepper bad for? Is capsaicin bad for you? Is I don't know. Is anything bad for you? All food makes you die eventually, <laughs> right? That's the good news. Uh, if makes you, you die. <laughs> Yeah, like literally your body, you need food for fuel. For life. But just the more your cells are sort of changing over and expending energy, you're just going to die. Yeah. Um, That's the reality of the fact. But like you said, shorthand is MSG bad for you? Absolutely not. No. Right? Especially when you consider every single other thing that we eat and consume. There is no... There is no uh, peer-reviewed research that indicates that MSG is bad for you at all. And everything that springs from the MSG being bad for you myth... It boils down to this. It's actually a story that sounds too crazy to be true, right? Let so, him know. Let it. Let us hear it. Let's just go back to what is MSG, right? Okay. Um, so it was originally created in the early 1900s by a Japanese chemist. They wanted to isolate effectively the taste of umami that you get from Japanese seaweed. So you mm. make something like dashi kombu, right? Sure. Which is a broth made from dried seaweed. Mm-hmm. You have this flavor that just lingers in your mouth. Yeah, it's literally uh, sodium and an amino acid, and they like fused it together to make monosodium glutamate. Bango? Bango? Bingo? Bingo, bingo. bingo. That's the bango. <laughs> so, 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 um, uh, like you said, it's an amino acid and it's effectively stabilized using salt. Yeah. So there is like, of course, sodium in MSG. It's about one fourth the amount that's in table salt, which mm. is just sodium chloride. Sure. Right. All right. So early 1900s Japan, that spreads all around East Asia and people find that it's just a great way to add flavor to your foods. Totally. Uh, around that time, we had the Chinese Exclusion Act. That basically limited the amount of Chinese immigrants that were coming oh, to America. When beca- was this? Like 1900s? Late 1800s. Late, uh, railroads I mean, and, it, and stuff? Exactly. And so it's basically just a bunch of uh, American racism yeah. being like very uh, orientalizing of Chinese culture. Mm-hmm. Even Mark Twain wrote about how Chinese people eat rats. Just like a really dark Shh. time for anti-Asian uh, racism in America. Mm-mm. That sort of coincided with the rise of MSG. <clears throat> and also in America, there were a lot of... Chinese restaurants springing from the early 1900s through to, like, the 1950s, right? Makes sense. Of course, and there was a rise in popularity of Chinese cuisine. And then in 1968, this is when the big racist MSG myth was perpetuated. Mm. Um, There was a letter to the New England Journal of Medicine by a biomedical researcher named Dr. Robert Ho Man Kwok. They they claimed to be Cantonese, and they said that every time they ate Chinese food— um, they would experience numbness and tingling in the back of their neck and their arms would get numb. And they would have crazy inflammation. They'd get headaches, Nicole. They'd start shivering. They'd start sweating. So a doctor says that his patients were doing this? Or no, a doctor was? said himself. Oh, okay, okay. And this is supposed to be a peer-reviewed letter that actually appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine, a real medical journal. Okay. It wasn't a study, but it was a letter. And it was supposed to be peer reviewed for evidence. Um, turns out it was not. And the reason you know this is that Dr. Robert Ho Man Kwok is not a real person. It was a guy named Howard Steele, 
a researcher, a researcher who was playing what he called a practical joke that launched decades of racism. Um, oh he, my god! I guess his. I just got chills around my body, dude. It's really bizarre. It's it, it, we'll we'll link to the story from Colgate Magazine that um, that really blew all this out because to me it's one of the most fascinating stories ever told. So this guy Howard Steele, he was a scientist, and his buddy was also a scientist. His buddy goes, "Hey, I bet you ten bucks you can never get published in a major medical journal." And the guy said, "Bet." And then that's literally how this started. And so he literally did this as a joke. You're kidding me. And it gets published in a real medical journal. The name Ho Man Kwok is Human Croc, as in Human Croc of S H I T. No Ho Man Kwok. Way. And That's like so crazy. he literally called the ju- the journal's editor, who he knew professionally, and said, Hey, that was me. <gasps> My bad. Um, please retract. And the guy just hung up the phone on him. He tried to send letters, nobody would respond to him. I don't know how much that is verified or if it's just told from his perspective. But the point is, this literally just became a um, it it was a meme before memes were a thing, because then people started sending letters to New England Journal of Medicine saying, Mm -hmm. yeah, me too. But it was a bunch of doctors trying to be really clever. So there was one doctor who wrote another letter saying, yeah, I also get what they dubbed Chinese restaurant syndrome, which like <gasps> sounds racist, right? Okay. And a doctor said, yeah, I also get this. And he, he used a bunch of scientific terms. He was like, yeah, I experienced lacrimation, which means crying. And like he just started like throwing out all these stupid medical terms. And then he like was writing obviously tongue in cheek as a joke mm-hmm. that like, oh, it may have been the fact that I drank like a quart of beer during that meal, too. And he okay. was he was taking the piss out of these letters, but people didn't see the joke in it and journalists just started publishing around it, Mm. which is absolutely crazy. It's not, it's not often when I'm like speechless on the podcast, but I'm like upset that this happened. I know. And then do you remember the killer clowns thing? Sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. (laughs) There were all these killer (laughs) clowns that were hiding out in uh, the woods in what Virginia they were cited. Not really because it was one story and then everyone was like, okay, I guess I'll be a killer clown now. Correct. Well, it wasn't even, it was like somebody dressed up as a clown and was photographed and then the news started publishing it. And then there ended up being like killer clown hysteria. Yeah. And so other people go, I got nothing to do on a Friday night. I'm bored. I'm gonna dress like a clown walk around. Kids would have like phantom killer clown sightings where they just wouldn't see anything and they just go, ah, I don't know, I'm scared, there's a clown, uh, whatever. And so it just became this situation where that it was put out into the ether. Washington Post wrote about it, New York Times wrote about mm. it. And so other people, they start eating 3,000 calories worth of, you know, Chinese food. A lot of American Chinese food does happen to be deep fried and covered in a That's sugary right. sauce because they sort of adapted, uh, restaurateurs adapted to an American sure. palate. They're like, y'all love KFC? That's yeah. fried chicken barbecue sauce? He, this is general too. shows. This yeah. is orange chicken. This is cashew yeah. chicken. You know? And so you eat 3,000 calories of anything, you're probably going to feel like trash. Yeah. Which so. the hilarity of all this is that if Chinese food wasn't so damn good, you wouldn't have been eating 3,000 calories of it, right? <laughs> I totally get not being able to stop eating Chinese food. It's not because of this magical flavor chemical. It's because it's good. The magical flavor chemical makes it good. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. it's the magical flavor chemical plus, like... Aromatics, being a good cook. Yeah. right? Like yeah. not being a, being a good, good cook, cook sure. Yeah. But it's like um, if you grew up growing up in a, in a, I said a majority white household. It was all white with me, my brother, <laughs> and my dad. Um, but anyways, like we didn't know how to cook. We didn't know what ginger, scallion, yeah. garlic, oyster sauce. We didn't have. We didn't cook with any of these sure. ingredients at home. So you go to a Chinese restaurant. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to stop myself because it's so damn good. I think the one thing that that sucks now is that. Like, for example, like packaged goods, like when you go to the grocery store Mm. and like in like the quote unquote Asian aisle, they have to write no MSG in these big red lettering to let consumers know. Like it's still even though it's been like debunked, you'll say there's still so much like BS around it because people are just conditioned to think MSG is bad for you. Like restaurant banners, like if a new Chinese restaurant opens up around the corner, Mm. they have to put a banner up that says no MSG. And I just think that's so shady because I like MSG. I know. I never, it's like, yes, MSG. I never cooked with MSG until I got here, actually, like yeah. mythical. And, you know, it's like these little these little flavor crystals. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what is this? And then you put it on your tongue. It's like drinking a quart of chicken broth. It's an incredible, incredible thing. It's a, it's a marvel of culinary excellence. And I think if people just put their racism aside <laughs> and just and just try it and cook with it. It's it's accent salt. Also it's packaged in different ways too. Yeah, it's, it's also just a salt. it's a white thing marketed to Americans as well. They just yeah. call it 
accent, accent. flavor enhancer is mm-hmm. pure MSG in the grocery store. Yeah, if you ever see it's, that. Just, it's just disappointing because if you learn how to cook with it, it can enhance any meal or any food like yeah. times 20. Like anything, if you oversalt a dish, it's going to taste too salty. If you put too much sugar in a dessert, I mean, I got a pretty high sugar tolerance. No, like I'm just kind of yeah. built different. Um, But it's going to taste too sweet, right? (laughs) Yeah. And MSG, people are like, scientists distilled it from seaweed and they used badass science. That's the way all food production has gone throughout history. We had to use... Corn syrup. We had to use science. Not even corn syrup. Sugar, dude. Yeah. People didn't have refined sugar. uh, Honey, we we had to take sugar cane juice and figure out how to boil it down and refine it. That's right. Flour is the same thing. Of course. Olive oil, hell. We've got cooking, we've got oil, a fuel source from little olives. Cooking like that's been, science. it's science. Yeah. And you can't be afraid of it. You can certainly be critical and dubious. Which is fine. We recommend that on the podcast. Yeah. That's what this whole podcast is about, is about being dubious to certain things. But just yeah. try it. It just pisses me off when people are just like, ugh, that has MSG in it. Like, what are you talking about? It's yeah. good. It's fine. It's like and saying salt or sugar or oregano. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so a lot of I there's still a lot of people who self-report symptoms of like, oh, well, I personally get headaches yeah. when I have MSG in excess. There's allergies. We're sure. not denying that there's humans out there that might or might not be allergic yeah. to MSG. That exists, I'm sure. But I think it's a little bit inflated. Yeah, or even just like a sensitivity to it, right? Like we see the same thing with um, gluten gluten is the big one. Yeah. Where I do not have enough of a scientific background. I took um, I took part in a couple weird psychological studies. (laughs) They got paid twenty bucks for in college. (laughs) Yeah, dude, it was weird. They just like you'd sit in a chair and for like three hours they'd just like show you a bunch of images of people and then you'd have to like try and remember them and like I don't know. It was a whole thing. They put electrodes on your brain and stuff. Whoa, like that like that book we both like, A Clockwork Orange? Yeah, just like mm. A Clockwork Orange. Did they tape your eyelids together and put drops in them? No, I asked them to, and they were like, sir, that's not that kind of party. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, like any food, you can have a sensitivity. There's people with gluten who are like, when I go to Europe, I can eat all the bread Josh, I want what is to. that? Why do they say that? Why do they lie? Bro, I don't know. I don't know if they're lying or not. That's what one of these that? crazy things. This is all... Relying on um, people are not very aware of how they actually feel. Hmm. So, okay, so gluten intolerance is a great metaphor for MSG. Okay. People suddenly saying, yo, MSG gives me headaches is going to influence other people to every time they get a headache, they think, oh, crap, when, did I have a bag of Doritos? Did I have Panda Express? Did I have something mm-hmm. else? And they're going to falsely attribute it to MSG. Yeah. Gluten may or may not be the same thing. I don't know. All my celiac homies out there. Sorry what, about it. <laughs> what up, Dan? Hasn't drank a beer since like 08. Caroline, um, sorry. <laughs> we got to go hang out at cider bars, which, you know what, honestly? I love cider. When Dan was living in Portland, some great cider bars I out there. I prefer cider to beer sometimes. Um, but people who say they have <laughs> sensitivities to stuff like gluten, it's like if if gluten allergies didn't like come onto the mainstream scene okay. in, in the rapid way that they did, would you still think you had that? Or would you just yeah. think, yo, I got the tummy gurgle sometimes? Hmm. See, that's the crazy thing about like bad for you or yes. allergic or intolerant. So I say every food, bro, I, I, eat, I eat three pounds of grapes and poop my pants. <laughs> Does that mean grapes are bad for you? No, it means I eat three pounds you of grapes. three pounds of grapes. Because yeah. I just didn't want to put them back in the fridge and I didn't want to get off the couch. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what other foods do you think, not foods, but like ingredients do you think get like a bad rep the way that MSG does? I can't <sighs> think of one other than sugar. Oh, yeah. Or caffeine. Sugar is one of those. Bad for you. I, when I say every food is bad for you, I... It's like almost if every food is bad for you, no food is bad for you. You know what I mean? There's yeah. data to support things like um, red meat. World Health Organization comes out with a study a couple of years ago that says that eating processed red meat once a week increases your risk for colon cancer an insane amount. Damn it. I, I know. eat so much of it. I love mortadella. Huh? We, you and I just ate. Oh my god, I ate so some, much like, mortadella with you. Mortadella right before this. I ate a hot dog before Me my mortadella too. as a snack. Me too. So I get it. So Ugh. it's very strange when people worry about something like MSG, which, again, glutamates. These amino acids are found in a lot of damn near every fermented That's food. Right. A mm-hmm. lacto fermented pickle is going to have glutamates. Mm-hmm. Uh, tomatoes naturally have glutamates. Um, I was going to say Doritos, if those are natural. <laughs> <laughs> Um, then but, we scourge them from the earth <laughs> like <yeah>. potatoes. <laughs> and so reports of this negative feeling of MSG, it tends to be higher when people eat Chinese food because that was the original association with yeah. Chinese restaurant syndrome. So whack. To this day, it still bothers me. I get Italian restaurant syndrome. 
You start, we had you start talking in an accent, and your hand does the pinchy <laughs> thing. Molto bene. <laughs> no, I'm um, just talking to the idea that conflating variables of oh the MSG is making me feel like trash mm-hmm. versus I just significantly the overate because I'm a lush. Pounds of the pounds of chow mein and the orange. And also because yeah. it's so good. So we used to order lunches in the office from a place called Pinocchio. We never do that now. We never do that now because everybody, this wasn't like the corporate overlords being like, you're not productive enough. We literally all banded (laughs) together and we're like, hey, we all hit a hard food coma after Pinocchio Day because their baked ziti is so good that you can't physically stop eating it. Holy crap. This is a weird, both dark and proud day in mythical entertainment when we're all like, y'all, we got to stop because like we're just eating too much eggplant parm and it's slowing down production. And so I, I, I understand this general idea. I understand. I just I just hate the fact that to this day, like there's labels on stuff and there's people that are like parading around and saying like to this day, like if I go out to like Chinese food with my friends, yeah. like does that place put MSG in their thing? And I'm like, probably you guys. Yeah. But they just don't get it. They just don't understand it. I think more and more people are becoming hip to that fact, though. And I think... If- I was going to say podcasts like this help. No, we're, we're not. We're <laughs> reacting they to. No, they help. Sure. I mean, that's the reason we want to do this, right? Is because people are still asking us this that's question. Right. And in fact, I kind of thought that we were like done with this. Because I mean, David Chang had talked about this on, you know, um, on Ugly Delicious. Sure. And so, I don't know. I suppose, though, information systems are very fractured. That's very true. You know what I mean? So, might as yeah. well just spray this from the rooftops anywhere we can go. Uh, and one thing that actually made me think that we were maybe a little bit done with the MSG thing, mm-hmm. I'm glad you brought up the idea that like, oh, sugar and salt, those are also bad for yeah. you. Uh, there was a research study done that was um, percentage of people who claim they avoid certain foods. Mm. So, MSG, 42% of people claim they avoided MSG. No way. But... 43% claim they avoid artificial colors, 45% artificial flavors, 50% quote-unquote preservatives, which, like, what does that even mean? Hmm. 53% said they avoid sodium. 61% said they avoid added sugars. So, yes, Nicole. I have a question. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, wait, uh, do we have any others before you make yeah, it? Do Josh, you wanna, I have something? a question. Any of, any of you out there, There's if you no had a question? There's no one else here. I know. I just don't want to keep calling on you because then it shows favoritism. Nicole, Josh called me his favorite. Okay, how do you avoid sodium? You yeah. can't. You, no salt, you just. No you, salt, Mrs. Dash. Yeah, I was literally, <laughs> literally going to say we all grew up. If you had a boomer or boomer adjacent dad, you grew up with low or, or salt free Mrs. Dash. So much, and it tastes like nothing, man. It tastes like nothing, like like dry wood chips. I yesterday Julia asked me like, can you not salt our food so much? And I was like. I'll under-season the salad. I'm telling you, it's hard. I, I get it. Like, as a person who knows how to cook, when I go home and I make something delicious, it's it's salted right on the edge of too much. I that's agree. That's how we're supposed to cook. That's, that's restaurant cooking. Yeah, it sucks. Season every layer of masala. It season the dressing. It season the vegetables before I, they go in. I want some under-seasoned white chicken. I don't <laughs> personally ascribe to the idea that salt is bad for you. And we my should. personal. We Can I tell you something? Go ahead. We need to because one day if we're going to explode like a balloon. <laughs> we're going to come up in here looking like Shane from Smosh. No offense. <laughs> just big. We're going to come in big. Is that your perception of Shane from Smosh? He's that he's huge. just like big? Is he that much bigger than me? I think he's just. Wow. I didn't know that like you had that. Person. Now I feel self conscious. Now I need to eat more no, salt. No, so no, no, Josh, don't compare yourself to Shane. Well, I know, but, but I, I, saying, I, I naturally do. Like, you're just going to come in and you're going to come in like, like <laughs> salty. Like, do you ever like have really salty food and then you wake up in the morning and your face is like three sizes bigger than it should no, be? No, I have no, <laughs> like, do truly, that? the only thing <gasps> I notice is that if I eat spicy food, the poops in the morning, they hurt. <laughs> and then if I eat like too many stone fruits, then the poops start running. If I That's have, all I know. If I have too much sodium, uh, the face, it just it just balloons and my ears go up past my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> That's hot. You're looking like Shrek. Um, so there. Okay. So let's talk about that, right? Like there are studies that they did with MSG that did say they included things like face swelling and um, That's from salt. I know. Well, it's it's one salt does that, but the studies that they were doing with MSG, um, the ones that had the strongest react to any of it was okay. intravenous. What? And so, they, yeah, they're just injecting MSG into people's veins. Where can and then every researcher party? was like, hey, but, like, here's the thing. That's not how food is consumed. If you, like, injected, uh, like, jello into your veins, that would also do really badly. Um, probably don't just do that when you're trying to test out These an actual digestive. Are doctors doing this? Dude, I don't understand. <laughs> 
get eight doctors. Listen, man, I think a lot of research, it's people trying to get more research funded. And so if they can just like show something. By doing something, it wrong? Yes. What do you Dude, mean? This is the wrong. Academia is a nightmare. Everyone's a fraud, <laughs> Nicole. Everyone's a fraud. I mean, it's just, I, I understand avoiding caffeine because it makes your heart go thump, thump, thump. Yeah, oh, but I love it, Nicole. I oh, I love the caffeine. I understand it makes you go like, that. And, and no, studies, it's weird. It's, it's so no, weird. But at this point, stop listening to me. At yeah, this point. I like the coffee, you know. Are you just going to mumble to yourself oh, yeah, like Sling Blade? You get one of them big old venti Macchiatos, you know what I mean? I like that. Mm, gorgeous. Mm. What do I you speak? like to get a start? Can you like get Josh, this is a video <laughs> podcast. They will see you not letting me speak and they will get mad in the comments. Write in the comments how mad you are. Okay. You ready? like Frappuccinos? <laughs> <laughs> okay, like I was saying, <laughs> rude. Okay, Sorry. you know what? You know what else I find funny about this? 32% of people avoid GMOs. Oh, that's a heck of a. GMOs that's a heck. Everywhere. That's a heck of a. I'm a genetically modified organism. I've I've been <laughs> genetically modified myself with uh, pre workout and beef jerky <laughs> since I was 16 years old. Beef jerky has MSG. Beef jerky has a lot of great MSG. Like in naturally. It. It's fa- um. When you I, dry meat, I guess does it yeah, get meat has glutamate in it, right? <laughs> it certainly does. Well, certainly me, does. It's me. an amino acid, right? <laughs> amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Okay, this is what our list says. Adenosine triphosphate. This is what our list, our list says. Anchovies, cured ham, mackerel, clam, scallops, oysters, egg yolk, shrimp, chicken. Leucine. <laughs> Mickey, how much longer do we have to do this? <laughs> I think... GMOs are a good <laughs> conduit for this because it's people looking at the wrong variables with MSG, right? These are buzzwords. These are bu- I bet you the average person don't even know what these things are. We stopped talking about we we talk, we stopped even talking about saturated fat. Oh, that's not even on this. What, what, why? Do you know what saturated coco- fat is? The coconut oil lobbyists. <laughs> they won. Okay, if you get anything out of this insane rambling podcast, one, the crazy story about how MSG even became to be known as bad for you in the first place, which is not so. Two, all food is terrible for you and will kill you. That is what people <laughs> say all the time. And all the studies show that I, I know my grandma died and she ate food. Think about that one. But for real, if all these foods are bad for you, which they are, salt, sugar, meat is bad for you. Um, oh, my God. Eggplants. Tom Brady doesn't eat eggplants because they're nightshades. 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 And, yeah, he doesn't eat yeah, tomatoes. I, and then uh, paleo, um, paleo. you can have, you, yeah, you got to go paleo. No, no, no. You got to go keto. Wait, 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 but I've heard you got to go vegan. And in fact, have you done the fruitarian diet, Nicole? So what it is, you eat raw testicles and papayas. And that is what they ate 3,500 years ago. Raw the testicles. point is, all this stuff <laughs> is complete BS. You eat in moderation. That's right. You eat things that you enjoy. Uh huh. You eat things that make your body feel good. Preach. And you ignore all of the stupid noise because you know why this shiksa <laughs> is going to change in 10 years, anyways. There's going to be a new list of new chemicals that people are afraid of. Yep. And they're going to be published articles going, is sodium citrate the thing that's given you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> butt pimples? That's a good Yeah. One. Is sodium citrate the thing that's giving you butt pimples? And I'm like, nah, my butt pimples are just genetic. <laughs> They've been there before. <laughs> <laughs> They've been there. They're not pimples because they don't weep. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're boils. You can't pop them. They're boils. I have butt boils and it's because of sodium citrate. And we're going to do another podcast in 10 years about sodium citrate. <gasps> you but, think we're going to do this in 10 years time? Yeah, definitely. We're still going to be in How 10 years. How old are you going to be? 40. How old are you going to be? 39. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> we're so old and wise now. Long story short, MSG's not bad for you. Eat it's, it in moderation, baby. Agreed. And get some for your kitchen. Try it out. And yeah. we're not being paid by the big MSG lobby. Nope. Um, although they did open an MSG cafe in Portland, which is really cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, they call it the Umami Cafe. It's at the Rose Garden. I don't know if it's still I've there. I've been to the Rose Garden. Really? Yeah, it's um, owned by Ajinomoto, which is our preferred brand of MSG in the kitchen. Correct. Yeah, Ajinomoto. Go go support your local Japanese chemical company. Buy Ajinomoto. All right, Nicole and all you others in the room. <laughs> We've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a segment we call Opinions, Opinions Are Like Casserole. Like casserole. Bound graphics card. I can't believe you think I can't sing. You've never shown me anything, <laughs> Nicole. Show, show me something. I can't believe. Just you. show, show me anything right now. 
Show me anything. Can you? What, what do you have? Do you have another song? Maybe. Maybe that first song wasn't for you. Do you have another song that you've prepared? What is this American Idol? Yes, I am Simone Cowell. <laughs> Play the opinion, Maggie. <laughs> uh, too much pressure. Who are the judges now? Even it's like Paula Abdul. <laughs> she's still there. It's, it's I thought it was like Katy Perry. Do you Perry know that Paula Abdul Shelton. is Jewish? No way. Yeah. You know she was the first Laker girl. Ever. There yeah. Was only one. They, well, like she was. They like. I think she's. I don't know, man. <laughs> opinion, please. I don't know if this is for opinions or like casseroles. It is. I've had one for so long, but I can't figure out Twitter and how what to submit it. it. It's so hard. It's mine. It? So my like favorite quarantine snack was lightly toasting an everything bagel. Okay, good start. And then putting um, banana peppers, sour cream, and sour cream and onion chips yeah, on this MSG. and smushing it down and then eating it. It was the greatest Ooh. thing ever. Thoughts? I love your show. It's so good. It so it's so entertaining, and I'd be learning things. I got a, my mom got a trivia question right the other day because of one of your episodes. What was it about? How like on carbonara, however you say that word, it's like the heat of the pasta that cooks the eggs a little bit. Hey, so fun! Thanks for all you do. My name is Amber, by the way. Hey, what's Amber. up, Amber? Um, that's really cool. If nothing else, I want people to be able to get better at Jeopardy from um, listening. What to do you, what was the question though? Like the Jeopardy question. Oh, about I'm wondering if it was like this pasta is made by warming egg yolks with black pepper and guanciale. I would guess that that was probably the question. Yeah, mm, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be about the root word of carbonara coming from a uh, coal miners. Maybe, maybe. But maybe. It, I think that's like sort of unverified. It's weird how so many of these words. Carbon. I know, but that that is like actually where it supposedly comes from. Um, Frick. But right, but like. It's weird how a lot of these words don't seem to have traceable etymology because they're like, ah, eh, there's this source that says that, and then this source that says that, like hot dog, who knows? Lightly toasted everything bagel, sour cream, sour cream and onion chips, and banana peppers. Sign me up, feel. sign me up. Sign me up. I and, love it, I love it. And the sour cream to me works better than cream cheese in for this sure, application. For sure, Because you have one salt from the everything bagel, yeah. salt and a lot of good MSG from them chips. So much. And then you got the pickles with the banana peppers. So, like, to me, you want that just pure creaminess, unsalted from the mm-hmm. sour cream. That's right. This is this is a chef's snack right here. Deserves a Mazel. chef's kiss. Hey, guys. Love the podcast. This oh. is an opinion that I get judged on a lot. <laughs> if you take a Triscuit, a dollop of grape jelly, and an anchovy filet, oh. that's a top-tier level snack. Get Hell yeah. Oh, my from God. The anchovies. You get the sweet from the jelly, oh but it has to be grape jelly. Okay, okay. Now, I'm biased because I can eat anchovies right out of the me can. Me too, me too, me I'm too. I'm telling you, it's a top tier snack. Can I Thanks, go? guys. Go, Nicole. I know, get this it, was, get it. I know this was directed towards you, but I do this, except I use orange marmalade instead of um, grape jelly. You do orange marmalade and anchovies? Mm-hmm. Sometimes strawberry. No way. Sometimes strawberry jam. But yeah, it is Triscuit plus anchovy plus whatever else is normally really good. Triscuit and anchovy has a beautiful like flavor, like texture situation going on. And then you just put a little bit of something sweet. Ugh, all it's missing is a nice little parmesan piece. You know what this is? Umami. It's umami. <laughs> I mean, like, really, this is the science that we're talking about yeah. at play right here. Because sure. I was sure. about to bring up the fact that more sea products, more fish, need to be... I thought you were taking, like, sea grade. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. no, more, like, products from the sea um, need to be cured in the way that we typically do pork, right? So okay. bacon, ham, we love those because... You know, it, you you are adding salt. You are generally aging it. You're intensifying flavors. There's so you're getting, fat. Yeah. There's fat too, and so the fat is just carrying the glutamates and the salt mm-hmm. and the protein across your freaking palate, and it makes it delightful. Yeah. Anchovies are salt cured fish. There's a lot of oil mm. in anchovies. It does the same thing, but you get that pleasant fishy funk. That's I love a good so funky good. fish. I, we were just talking about how much I I don't care for one of those like ooh it's such a mild flaky white fish. I'm like no, I'm eating a fish. Give me the fish stank. Dang it. That's I what I'm here anchovies. for. Give me a mackerel. Give me an anchovy. Give me a sardine. Give me a smelt. I can just eat them out of the jar. Isn't that crazy? Why did I just sound like Alex Jones on that? I'll eat me some smelt. Anyways. Sorry. <laughs> this is a great snack, though. Yeah, a good snack. Good Get snack. jelly? I don't. 
I don't like. I had triscuits. I'm on. The, I'm, all, I'm always on the fence about. It. I love triscuits. It's like a They're savory, weedy. savory mini wheat. Yeah, and yeah, I don't know. Good. I guess I, I think I need um, to revisit. Triscuits. I'm so sorry. Um, actually, mini wheats are naturally savory. You're just used to the frosted ones. No, but it's salted. A triscuit is salted in a way that mini Whatever. wheats is not salted. Maggie, he's They're ranting un- what is, again. What do you mean I'm ranting? I'm not ranting right now. Alex Jones. The floor in the water is turning to the freaking fish. Never mind. Josh, Nicole, this is your favorite pro wrestler slash home cook, Guapo Grande from Netflix Battle. Guapo Grande. Guapo Grande. Oh. I have a hot take. Mashed potatoes are a scam. Oh, why is that? Why is that? The best part of the potato is the skin. And it's nutritious. So why not just extra bake your potato? Hey. Add some sour cream and butter. Huh? Whip it all together, hey? and you got potato skin whipped mashed potatoes. It's delicious. You don't need to make just mashed potatoes. <laughs> use the skin. We use the whole yeah. vegetable in this kitchen. Guapo grande. Guapo grande. Coming in hot. Pro wrestling. Coming in high, I'm flying good. off the top ropes, hitting you with that swanton bomb, hitting you with that controversial opinion. I'm sorry, I have something in my eye. <laughs> I would like, okay, the idea of putting it back into the skin, 100%. Yeah. I love that. 100%. Um, so good. I know, I was about to tell him about a crazy dish that exists called potato Twice skins. Twice baked potatoes. <laughs> no, potato skins. Oh. You go to TGI Fridays, what they do, this is really smart, they hollow out the potato and they make their mashed potatoes out of the insides, and then they use the outsides to make a stuffed potato skin, a little boat, filled with cheese, bacon bits, and a sour cream. That is correct. They do that at the TGI Fridays. And so, Guapo Grande, what you can do is split an order of mashed potatoes <laughs> and potato skins with somebody. They get the, the mashed potatoes. It's like my brother used to only eat the uh, inside of a loaf of bread. That's my man right there. <laughs> which, is, that too, yeah. which is great because I just love the crust. I don't need You're the fluffy. You're a crust man? I don't need the fluffy inside. The crust is the interesting part. Hashtag Josh is the crust, crust man. Has, I'm crusty. <laughs> the crust has a more interesting <laughs> texture. It has that mild reaction no, no, flavor. No, 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 no. Give me the white. Give me the crust. Give me the white. Don't ball. say white. Don't say white with that accent. It gives off <laughs> the wrong give me the white <laughs> you can't say it like that Nicole. you know what you do you go to cheesecake factory and you just take your two fingers and you just go in the bread like this with your thumb you just go yeah Whoa. how do you do it <laughs> and then you just kind of pull it all out and then you roll it into a ball and then you go oh. it's like you're performing a cesarean on a dolphin you just Look put at my it fingers. in there and just hey, did you know it. that my fingers do this weird thing where they kind of like get stuck like that <laughs> yeah I do it too <laughs> yeah check it out <laughs> Check it out. Check out this finger. Check it out. All right, let's do it. Let's listen to another one. <laughs> Sorry, we're just in silly mode right now. We're having a little silly fun time. Hi, I'm Austin down from Florida. I'm a biology teacher. Cool. And um, leftovers. I think they're the best breakfast. You just a handful of cold leftovers out of the Tupperware in the fridge at five in the morning, and that's the perfect way to start the day. <laughs> you don't need to reheat them. You don't need to do anything with them. Just cold leftovers, hand to mouth. <laughs> or Tupperware to hand to mouth, and that's that's the way leftovers were meant to be eaten. That's that's what you know was intended when they were invented in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. person is educating the youth of America or Canada or some other English. He's nation. from Florida. Oh, he's in Florida. <laughs> his name is Austin from Florida. And oh, I thought his name was Florida, and he's from Austin. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> teaching the youth good things. Is good habits. like like zygotes and um. <laughs> I always thought Zygote was pronounced Zygote. And so I was in like a biology class and I was like, <laughs> in ninth grade. Oh God, and I was like, the thing about human Zygote is, no, is that. Did yeah. someone make fun of you and say, that's not how you say it, dork? Um, I don't remember, dude. Okay, how about now? That's not how you say it, dork? <laughs> yeah, thanks. You're bringing me back to high school. Um, no, I. I leftovers, I I fully disagree, and I personally, for my own life, you disagree with cold leftovers at five o'clock in the morning. I do not think I eat what what leftovers do I eat cold? Do I eat any leftovers cold? I like cold chicken a lot. I eat a lot of cold chicken. I'm a big fan <laughs> of like bone in chicken cold. When you go to the restaurant and then you go ho- and you bring home like a slice of pizza and like a handful of Brussels sprouts, never. Never cold. What are you talking about? Never cold. I will never. Nicole, I'm the person who has leftover sushi. It's rare, but it happens. You have left. <laughs> and I, and I put it in the microwave to take the chill off. No way. That's because crazy. I wanted. I wanted to get back up to sushi bar temp. No. Way. Like I like to eat. What are you doing? Stretching. <laughs> you're like it's like you're caught. You're like dolphin <laughs> caught in a net. Um. No, don't do that. You're like now. You're like a turtle with a straw in its nostril. <laughs> 
Um, I have a, I have a lot of friends who eat leftovers cold. Yeah. It does not personally suit me. I'm a big fan of what I call the um. Oh, what are the the MC Escher stairs? The stairs by MC Escher. <laughs> that. <laughs> Yeah, where it's like the stairs, and if, if you follow your eye pattern, they keep going around in a loop, but they look like they're stairs. going Stairs. Yeah, I do. I call it the MC Escher leftovers theorem, where I have, say, a roasted chicken, right? And okay. Then, and then I eat half the chicken, I put it back in there. Then it's like, well, cool, I'm making chicken salad from this, and then I'm I'm making stock from the bones. And then you take- Are you really making- No, I'm not. This is a bad example. You never make stock from the This is a bad example, bones. but You're the point lying. is- The point is, I have literally had, and this is probably a food safety issue, so nobody like take my advice on it. <laughs> But I have, like, found a, a new dish of leftovers in my fridge, and if I trace back the first ingredient from that, it was, like, two weeks ago I cooked it. But, like, Ew. you'll make a bunch of, say, you'll make a bunch of chorizo and you'll have it in the fridge, and then you use that chorizo to make a hash, and then you use that hash to make a soup, and then you use that soup to make a sauce, and then you use that sauce to make, like, a chicken salad. Um, no. And I just keep going on it, and no. I don't know how I haven't gotten listeria or I don't yet. know either. I like to freeze most of the stuff in my fridge if I don't use it after, like, a week and a half, unless it's a cured product, like a smoked salmon. No, I think if you, it's, like, in, um, at Puyol... Chef, I knew uh, you were going to mention Oliveira. the mole. I knew you were going to He's been do cooking that. the same mole for over 10 years, Nicole. You don't think he puts it in a, a Tupperware container at the end of the night? No, they actually do not. What do they do? They leave it heating, which kills the bacteria, so that makes sense, but, which is which I'm not doing. Exactly. <laughs> I should just keep a pot of, <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. Just keep a, a perennial pot of stew. You're moving. You can't do that. Oh, shoot. Yeah, once I move into my new apartment. Now I'm going to start the perennial stew. Perennial? And it's not good when you have a cat. Is that the same thing as stone soup? I don't know what stone soup is. <laughs> yeah. Maggie, All right, one more, one more, one Maggie, more. Maggie, Google stone soup, What is please. stone soup? Google, you've never heard of stone soup before? Uh, look up infinite stew as well. Dude, it's whenever you put a stone in the soup to keep it hot. Is that what it is? That's like they do that in some. Korean or maybe, soups. or maybe it's like an old wives' tale where they're like, "Oh, the soup is good," infinite. and you just put a stone in. My laptop died, or else I'd be looking it up too. Infinite stew, perpetual stew, perpetual. Also known as a forever soup, a hunter's pot or hunter's stew, uh, is a pot. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, 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 foods that can be cooked for decades or longer if properly maintained. Yeah, it's a common element in descriptions of medieval inns. They used to have perpetual stews. We just have the same pot of stew. Just boiling and That's going. That's why so many people died. To it. Yeah. I guess if like, I still believe in leeching pretty strongly. <gasps> Me too. It just makes sense. You know what I believe in? When the maggots go, when they when they go and they put maggots in the in the, in the the scar and then yeah. it eats the well, It eats the bad. It eats the and bad then, out. Yeah. I saw that on an episode of Taboo. I used to watch a lot of Taboo yeah. when I was like 12. Screwed Weird me up. Weird show, dude. Weird show. Me All up. I'm saying is I got bad blood in me. I need to get the blood out. There's a there's a creature that sucks blood this is out. Josh being Charlie. From, I feel like no, Josh but I just to me being Charlie from it's always and everyone's sunny. like people back then were so stupid. It's like I don't know, man. I still don't see a problem. With I'm it. down to let's start you leeching. Know? What? Let's, I'm down. We're in. Get I'm some leeches, so dude. down. I've been trying thing. to leech in the office for. Forever. I'll make it happen. I'll make it Thank happen. Thank you. Hey, my name is David. I love your guys' show. Uh, the <laughs> Cheez-Its versus Goldfish uh, yeah. made me think of something else. In the same way that Josh loves really wet food, mm-hmm. I get a simple joy out of having a mouthful of really small food. Oh. The Cheez-Its are better, oh. but a mouthful, mouthful small, huh? of Goldfish is more fun to chew through. In the same oh. way, Fruity Pebbles is better than Fruit Loops. Oh. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Yeah, this is a really good opinion this that I haven't opinion. thought about. I've never heard of, I've never thought about like small format foods. Yeah, well, think about the difference in experience between eating a whole Dorito and then taking all the little small baby Doritos at the end of the bag mm-hmm, and shoving mm-hmm, them in your mouth. Mm-hmm. It's something really something pleasant about I, it. It's something I've never thought about, but I will continue to think about Makes for years think. to come. It's a, it's great. Makes you think. I, I'm going to start thinking about what you're doing. Makes you think. I'm doing a little like finger tap for emphasis. It makes you think. <laughs> all I'm saying is. I'm thinking about it. You're in such a silly, goofy mood. Orzo pasta. I hate orzo. I hate it too. Oh! That that to me sort of disproves this theorem. I'm wondering how he feels about orzo because to me it's absolutely yes. <laughs> Please call back and tell us how you feel about orzo. But um, you know what I love doing? Check this out. Grapes. What's that? I'll take grapes. Stop talking about grapes today. I love grapes. Grapes to me are the perfect, to, to paraphrase Dimitri Martin, they're the fruit of opportunity. You get a bad grape, your day's not ruined. You can eat another grape. You can eat another you 70 grapes. You still quote Dimitri Martin? It's 2023. For kids, kids these oh days where they're God. like, John Mulaney is the Messiah comic. We had Dimitri Martin. God must have named oranges before he named carrots. 
Like he got to oranges and said, well, that's orange. Let's call it an orange. And then he got to a carrot and he went, oh, crap. That was the funniest joke we'd ever you, heard you know, was the in funny, 2008. You know what was the funniest joke I heard when uh, laugh quietly to myself? That was a big one. Which one? He, when he's like, there's so many like LOLs, LMAOs. Oh, yeah. La- LQ. How do you spell laugh quietly to uh, myself? LQTM. Yeah, something yeah. laughing quietly to myself. Yeah, that was a big Dimitri Martin. And joke. he was hot. That's what we considered okay, hot. Okay. Okay. He had the he had the okay. kind of emo hair, and we love. I n- still love Dimitri Martin. I still think it's very funny. His little sketch pad. Dimitri, come on the podcast. I'm sorry, it's 2023, but like, just come anyway. He saw a guy Nicole at a party with a leather jacket, and he said, "That's pretty cool." And I saw a guy with a leather vest, and said, "That's not cool." So you know what? The key to coolness must be leather the sleeves. sleeves. Uh, Funniest <laughs> thing we'd ever heard. <laughs> Anyways, what are we talking about? Oh yeah, grapes. I like to shove a bunch of grapes in my mouth. Oh, That's yeah. all I was saying. And then we start talking about so you much. So this person must like spoonfuls of rice. <laughs> Maybe. We don't know. We haven't asked him. He likes Fruity Pebbles. I'll tell you what. I think what? Rice Krispies as a cereal are pretty good. <laughs> really? You like Rice Krispies cereal? Yeah, I was making Rice Krispie treats with my lovely fiance Julia the other day. Okay. And uh, we both just enjoyed, while we're waiting for him to set, a nice bowl of Rice Krispie cereal. Small. No way. It's a lot in your mouth. You ate that? Plain, no sugar, no additional sugar. Shocking. Nice. All right, well, on that <laughs> note, thanks so much for stopping by a hot dog as a sandwich. If you liked what you heard, um, <laughs> uh, why? <laughs> uh, no, subscribe. Uh, of course, we're on YouTube now if you're listening right. to this on an audio-only platform. If you're listening to this on an audio-only platform, we are on the YouTube. That's right. Sorry, I'm, I don't have my... It's YouTube.com slash at a hot dog is a sandwich. That's right. What some people do, though, is they just go to the search bar... And they type in a hot dog of a sandwich, that and then we'll too. come up. Yeah, yeah. You'll see these faces. Look at them. Look When's at the last time you've put in a full URL ever? Look at look at the camera. This is what we look like. Smile. <laughs> Hi, I do the podcast. Hey. Hey, welcome to the hype. Yeah, that's what our, I do that's what our faces look like. Hey. 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 We, we do podcast. Sorry, I didn't. And bring your face here. Bring your face here. Okay. <laughs> It's super. It's gone super good. We're super natural. At being <laughs> okay. Camera. Okay. And if you want to be featured on Opinions Like Casseroles, which you obviously do, you can give us a ring and leave a quick message at eight three three dog pod one. If it's longer than a minute, we will not listen to it. That's eight three three dog pod one. <laughs> you think you're at your house? I kind of. I spend more time here than I do at my what house. What the hell? Uh, my face. If you, I'm so sorry. Do you have a thing about feet, positive or negative? Because either way, it's inappropriate <laughs> if I'm doing this. But if you feel perfectly neutral about them, then it's fine. We'll see y'all next time. <laughs>